Hey, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Danielle here from the Fertile Spirit, and I'm here with um, Jennifer Waters, who is just an incredible practitioner, holistic practitioner, acupuncturist, extraordinaire. She can tell you more. Um, but we wanted to talk about probably a, a broad ranging uh, host of things um, and how how like this kind of holistic perspective plays a huge role in fertility. Um, and so we'll probably just have a conversation and see where we go. But Jennifer, do you want to take a moment to introduce yourself and what you do? Yes. Hello, everyone. Hi, all of you. Well, some of you already know me, Jennifer Waters. I'm one of the acupuncturists at CNY Fertility and CNY Healing Arts. And I have to apologize. <laughs> they are now mowing the grass here at my house, you know. So, <laughs> of course, it's one of those days, but we're happy it's Friday. It's a beautiful day here in upstate New York. And I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm part of the CMY Healing Arts team at 191 Intrepid Lane. So I hope that if you happen to be in upstate New York, please come visit us. We've got um, incredible practitioners there. It's, you know, most spas, I think, have employees. And we have really dedicated professionals. But this is more than a career for them. It's really a calling. And for those of us that have been in practice for a long time. Okay, Jennifer, just so you know, I think it sounds worse for you than it does for us. So okay. you're okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I'll tell you, I'll um, tell you if the lawnmower gets I'll tell you if the lawnmower gets too close. I think you're okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um so anyways, for those of us that have been in practice a long time, it's it's a calling. It is an honor to serve, and I've been in practice a long time, and I love helping people figure out what is the cause or what is behind the imbalances in their body, otherwise known as disease. It did just get a little bit worse, so I'm just wondering. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm going to move wondering. inside. You're going to get a little okay. tour of my house now. Here's the outside. <laughs> it's just one of those days. Yeah, this is the beauty. Look, everybody, it's like the beauty of this moment of time that we're in where we do get to kind of have a more intimate intimate take and, and also like how do we move through the, uh, the imperfection of all of these moments with grace. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, that's better. That's much better. Okay, all right, good, 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 cool. yeah. Remember, it's never what's happening outside of us that's the stress. It's how we respond to it inside, as you know, better than most. So we have to be resilient. We have to learn to adapt and not worry about the small things. If this is the biggest problem in my life that the lawnmowers are here, then I'm doing pretty good <laughs> because I'm not the one out there pushing mower. <laughs> Although I have been, and it was a pretty good job. Yeah. yeah. So you were talking a little, and, and just so you guys know, like we are going to take your questions. So feel free. I see, I don't know if it's Chell or Chelly, Pele. We, we see your question. We'll definitely get to your questions. Um, so feel free to put them in the chat. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll just to yeah. circle back, Jennifer, I think you were talking about yeah. um, just like the team at, at CNY and C CNY Healing Arts and kind of how you guys approach yeah. things. We have a great team. You know, some of the massage therapists there have been there for over 10 years. That's unheard of in a spa-like atmosphere. So we've all been working together for a very long time, and it's a, it's a wonderful group. Everyone works together, and it's not easy work, and uh, we're all in this together. And it's a wonderful place, and thank you to Dr. Kiltz. He's always improving the space, and he's really continuing to help us improve the new location for CMY Healing Arts. And so thank you for that. And it's been um, busy there, and it's wonderful. Yeah. So before we answer this question, though, about improving egg quality, I, I want to talk just for a moment about what – causes a decline in egg quality, right? Um, so one of the things I'm very interested in, and like I said before, I've been in practice a long time, is looking at what causes disease in the body, what causes a decline in health. 
And I firmly believe everybody that knows me knows that I say everything begins and ends in the psycho-emotional realm, right? So how you feel and what you think really matters. By the time you manifest a fibroid or PCOS or something like that, that means that it's been knocking at the door for quite a while. And you ignore it because you're young, you're healthy, and you're resilient. You can get over things. You're used to recovering. And then as you get older and there's a, a change on a cellular level, then suddenly you manifest. You're like, oh, my gosh, I have an ovarian cyst. That happened overnight. Suddenly I was diagnosed with that. Nothing happens overnight when it comes to formation of chronic acute disease in the body. It's been happening for a long time, but you ignore it because it's so subtle. So I want to encourage everybody, pay attention to the subtle things in your life, really how you feel. If you can take a moment and practice some meditation as a way of examining what's going on in your mind, we everybody has a busy mind. You're not alone. But see where your triggers are, where your negative thoughts go, and work on that level first. Then you're really pre preventing disease from forming in the body, right? So if you can work on that level, by the time it gets to somebody's working with me, it means, okay, now we have to do something that's a little bit more, um, more intervention. So I love to begin with what we're calling purification practices because what's behind most diseases are heavy metal toxicity, viruses, bacteria, and other toxins, right? It's not a question of do you want to detox? Do you want to start purifying your body? It's a matter of how and how long. And so I'm a huge fan of that. It begins with what you're buying to use, cleaning products, household products, uh, beauty products, everything you put on your skin has a huge effect. The quality of water you're drinking, you do not want to drink out of plastic. Please, please, please. We're getting a new water filter at Healing Arts. Yay, finally. We need to eliminate plasticizers from our life. These are endocrine disruptors. So this is easy things you can do. Um, don't eat things in tin foil. Stay away from heavy metals. Try to eat organic as much as you possibly can. These are the easy things to do. And then we can do some purification practices. Um, breath work is wonderful. Sweating. If you have access to a sauna in the wintertime, sweat it out. It's the number one way to detox heavy metals is sweating. Then we can do other things. There's targeted supplements. We have a couple other lines. There's, there's, we can choose what's going to work for you. Uh, there's lots of options. There is a lot of bad news out in the world. We all know it. We're bombarded with bad news every day, all day. But I'm here to tell you there is a lot of good news in the world. And the good news in terms of healthcare is really good. We have amazing products available to us now that weren't available five years ago, 10 years ago. Incredible modalities, frequency generators. Um, I've been working with these suppositories. I know it sounds a little extreme, not for this group, but pulling out heavy metals, pulling out toxins from the body. They're so easy to do. Um, so we need to focus on what is working. We have the LifeWave patches. We can increase your glutathione levels 300% 24 hours just by applying a little, looks like a little Band-Aid. I mean, how easy is that? Yeah. So, um, so it's a really exciting time to be involved with health and healing and healthcare and practices that you can do at home. Thank you. I mean, you give us so much hope. And one of the things I appreciate is that like, you know, it's not just lip service. Like these are all of these modalities and these things that, ex that exist that we can actually do, that we can create change with. And so that just yeah. feels so empowering, you know, like to know that there are like tangible steps we can take. And yeah. I think one of the things that like I'm, I'm really excited about, you know, with the Fertile Spirit, which is our our new patient support program at CNY, where we're working with all different coaches and doulas to kind of really give someone an ally, someone in their corner, someone helping them through this phase, this crucial phase of life, going through fertility, 
a fertility journey and fertility treatments. Um, but I think also that for those of us, because so many CNY clients are, uh, you know, coming from all over the country or all over the world, to be able to kind of tangibly offer some of these these things to people where they can start implementing them in their lives and in their routine from wherever they are. So like, it's yeah. awesome if I could work in person with you at Syracuse, but I'm in California and so what can I do, you know? So do you fly, me out there. fly me out there. That's <laughs> I would love it. I would have so much fun. We'll do light patches, we'll do acupuncture. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, so no, definitely. Mm -hmm. So I really maybe think it needs to be a lifestyle. It's you know, we used to think of detox, which means you're going to fast for one week in the spring or fast in the summer, do some really difficult, restricted diet for a period of time or take a lot of pills at one time for a or do colonics or whatever. And mm -hmm. there's a time and a place for everything. But you really, ideally, you want to have this be a lifestyle so that you're doing something every single day to support the organs of detoxification, the liver, the kidneys, the colon. And it's easy to do. You know, you stop the assault, first of all, with the products. And you know, we have to be informed consumers. We really have a lot of power as consumers. If we stop buying the poison, they're going to stop making it. They're going to be forced. We've seen a lot of changes already in what is now available to us. I mean, it's taken off. Yeah. Um, thank gosh. And that's consumer demand. And so good. We have to take back the power buy the things that are not going to be causing problems in our body and do something every day to promote health. Yeah. And so like, I don't know, maybe we uh, it's, eventually we can create some kind of like, I know there's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but I almost want to create like a, like a little, uh, diagram or something of like the different levels of things that we can do because there's there's like as you kind of started this conversation with you know there there's the daily kind of psycho-emotional maintenance um the stories we tell ourselves the things we believe about our lives about ourselves about the world and how like that almost i often think about those things as like you put on um glasses and there's like a lens in the glasses and if the if that filter is one of like I'm, you know, it's not going to happen for me. I have bad luck or I'm not healthy or, I, you know, then we see everything through that lens. And so yeah. really starting with the thoughts and like the, those thoughts create feelings, those feelings create behaviors, those behaviors create habits. So that, and then there's like the basic daily care stuff, like actually getting enough sleep, actually drinking enough water and having it be good water and like all the different environmental things that you talked about that, you know, the nights when I go to bed by 11 compared to I can't fall asleep until 1230 or one, my, the next day, there's no question that my body is feeling it. And, you know, so even though we kind of gloss over these things, they are so important, right? To Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then all these other ways that you're talking about when we need to kind of like go to that higher level of wanting to do more things uh, physically, specifically to target balancing our systems, bringing them um, into, you know, a better state for conception and, and for sustaining a pregnancy. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Do you want to maybe look at some of these questions? We had uh, Shell asking about improving egg quality in women over 43. And then Lisa, <laughs> almost the around the same age, possibly, um, who had a healthy child but had two losses. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that, Lisa. It's very, very challenging. And this is what I've really um, discovered in my research. My main interest now is improving egg quality. Why? Because I really personally connect with it because it is about improving your overall health, which is about preventing disease. So we want to get you as healthy as we possibly can before you conceive then it's you're the most likely to end up with a take home baby. So improving your egg quality is preventing miscarriage. That's the thing that I now completely believe. And so it's wonderful. So many of you have had recurring pregnancy loss. And so we want to do everything that we can in whatever amount of time that you have, that you feel you can wait. Um, 
we want to honor that and get you ready. So there's lots of things that you can do. The thing about functional integrated medicine is that it's customized. We have to take a look at you personally. A couple of weeks ago, I did this um, tongue diagnosis. I don't know if you saw it, but I had people send me pictures of their tongue so I could diagnose it. Because in Chinese medicine and Ayurveda and lots of other nutritional um, modalities, we use the tongue to show us what's going on with all of your internal organs and in particular, your organs of digestion elimination. So um, it was really great to receive all these pictures of the tongue in the mail. It was awesome. And what I learned from looking at everybody is People's guts are inflamed. They, they're a wreck. And some obviously more than others. So if there's one thing you want to do to improve your egg quality right away, it's improve your digestion. Because if you have the perfect diet, but you're not absorbing those nutrients, it's not good. So we need to take down the inflammation. We want to repair the gut lining. We want to eliminate the candida. We want to find out if there's bacteria in there, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. So there's ways you can do that depending on where you live. There are gut tests you can do. Um, we can talk about that later, but we want to improve your digestion. And simply, if you just start chewing your food better, you're going to improve your digestion, right? We often rush through meals, but... Um, you know, really mindfully, consciously eat your food. Try to chew each bite 50 times. We used to say 100, but I don't think anyone's going to do that anymore. So you know, really chew your food. Let it mix with the saliva in your mouth. This is where the natural digestive enzymes are. After you eat, rest. Take 10 minutes. Lie down. Let your body digest a little bit if you have the luxury of that, especially after dinner. Don't eat when you're in a negative emotional state. So we can, we can now say that negative emotions are a kind of toxin. They are. Um, so we don't want that affecting how we're digesting our food. And, you know, it's a lot of times it's the only time we have to talk to our partner, our friends, our children, whoever. And a lot of the conversations can be very triggering. I've been noticing this more and more. Oh, we're finally having dinner together. Oh, let's talk about, you know, why didn't you take the trash out or whatever? And then suddenly there's this stress during the meal. Don't do it. Just enjoy your food. Get through the meal. Bring up the issues later, okay? Because we have to digest our food well. You, you want to drink a little bit of water or whatever you're going to drink with your meal. Sip on it throughout the meal. Don't drink a lot of ice, cold food. It weakens your digestive power. So if you're drinking ice throughout the whole meal, that's not good. You want to have little sips of water throughout the whole meal. Hot water is ideal. A little bit of lemon is good. It helps digest the food. Um, we use different digestive enzymes depending on what's going on. I saw a lot of the crack in the center of the tongue is a lack of B vitamins, right? So people need B vitamins and they need more minerals. Those are the two things. And then digestive enzymes as needed. Some of them have HCL in there, the hydrochloric acid, which is great. If you do have a bacterial infection, that HCL is going to make your... Um, acid alkaline balance more acid which is good that helps to eliminate bacteria we have other enzymes that have l-glutamine in there that is the amino acid that helps to knit the gut lining if you have what's called leaky gut which is really inflammation and candida and whatever else um, so we want to get those junctures tighter and that's how you're going to absorb the nutrients the best also, just from my own personal experience, do you have anything to say about like um, when people, like when we overeat? Because I almost feel like our system can just shut down if it, if it gets too much at once. Yes. And yes. I know in our country, that's a huge thing of like just these massive portions. So mm -hmm. that, that it's not just about being thin, right? It's, it's about like yeah. doing that so that, we, so that we actually can keep the fire, the digestive fire alive in our bellies. Well, here's the thing. Do this with your hands, right? Make a fist. That's the size of your stomach, okay? No one believes it. They think, oh, no, my stomach's definitely bigger than that. But this is the size of your stomach. 
And we're supposed to be eating to 80% capacity because it's an actual sphincter based organ that has to move in order to digest food. It has this peristaltic, you know, action. And if it's stuffed, it can't, we all stuff it, you know, but if you can eat to 80% rest, you will feel full in just a couple minutes. If you can give yourself a little bit of pause, then that's exactly right. Then you're going to feel full. Then you're able to digest it. Your stomach has some elbow room. When you stop, I mean, it literally it does get stretched out and then you need more and more food and that becomes the norm. And that's not good. That's not good. Yeah. So overeating. And there's a lot of debate over small, frequent meals. I love what Dr. Kiltz talks about intermittent fasting. You do get a break. You want to have a break for your digestive fire to rekindle. I think that that's good. But a lot of it depends on your lifestyle, the climate you're in, what's going on. The adrenals love small, frequent meals throughout the day. Not everybody can do that. Some people just want to have a big meal at lunch, not much dinner. So it just kind of, we have to customize it for you and your lifestyle. Yeah. And I noticed that like seasonally it changes so much. I know last summer I was doing like a longer stretch of intermittent fasting for maybe like 13, 14 hours. And by the time it got cold outside, I was like, no, like I want, I want more food. I want it to feel warmer. I, you know, it just, and also with our cycles, like this is a huge thing. I don't know if you could weigh in on this, but I wish I had realized this in my twenties because I thought there was something wrong with me. Like now I can track it where when I'm like post ovulation, pre, you know, PMS, my hunger level is just crazy. Like I'm insatiable, not as much now, but like, and when I, and then like right after my period, like I'm just not that hungry. And I, I really thought like I was, it was good when I wasn't hungry and I was bad when I was hungry. And there's so much around that too. But so just really like listening to like, if I'm really, if the hunger is coming from a real place of physical hunger, not like, Am I actually sad or lonely or tired or angry or whatever? But to really go with intuitive eating, like, am I hungry now? And like, and to yes. find healthy ways to honor that. Yes. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I love the four phases of the menstrual cycle. This is our gift, right? We can honor this. And each phase has a different offering. And so a time to rest, a time to engage more, a time to eat more, a time to do more. And it's wonderful if you can really tune into that and honor it. It gives you this rhythm through the month, every month. That's beautiful. And if we can allow ourselves to rest for two or three days, that's great. During days one, two, and three, we need a break. You should not be lifting heavy things. You shouldn't be playing tennis and taking ibuprofen. You should just take it easy. Give yourself a break. In terms of cravings, um, I think it's important to notice what you crave. Like people that always crave sweets, that is telling us there's a weakness in the spleen and we want to strengthen the spleen stomach energy. And that could balance that out. There's a big difference between, you know, craving a steak versus craving M&Ms, right? So if you're craving whole foods, then that's the body telling you, I need these nutrients now. The body has its infinite wisdom and you can just follow that, honor that. But if you start craving potato chips and all of the junk food, that's telling you something else as well. Um, salt, people that crave salt, that's connected to the kidneys and adrenals. So pay attention to that. You want to make sure you're using the good salt, the real salt. Um, mm -hmm. And then that craving should go away. Um, yeah. 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 And I, you know, maybe this is a conversation we can, we could probably have just a whole live just on this. And maybe we will at some point, because I think from the psychological perspective where I'm coming from and like just looking at where we all are culturally and the expectations we put on ourselves, especially as women, um, it's so easy to kind of lose touch with, uh, you know, like it, it becomes about, I should do this. I shouldn't do that. I should do this. And we stop really, really listening. Just like you said, like, am I craving whole foods or am I craving something else? I'm like, what does that mean about an imbalance? And, and really kind of like connecting to it from a place of like curiosity, acceptance, self-compassion, understanding, as opposed to like, I'm good or I'm bad. And we kind of can get very binary with that. And I think that 
anyway, I think it's just the more information, like what you're providing, Jennifer, that we have to really understand like how we're functioning as these living systems, the more we can really get into like the, the wisdom of the body, as opposed to like hearing about some, you know, way we're supposed to be or what, you know, or sh- what we should or shouldn't do. So anyway, it's a bigger conversation, but I think it's an incredibly important one. Um, so, it really yeah. is. I'm I'm shocked at how much shame and guilt and remorse there is around food and body image and all of that. We have a ways to go. And it all begins with self-love. If you can tell yourself every day that no matter what, and I love the emotional freedom technique, I have a very simplified version of it that I do myself tapping on small intestine three, whatever you feel, if you can say, even though I feel like burnt toast or whatever, I deeply love and accept myself. I love that because it just allows you to be okay with whatever feeling you have. Mm -hmm. And um it's a lot it's it's a lot to go through and if you are craving a lot of bad foods at once like somebody just said um brenda craving salt and sugars that can also be a sign of excess heat in the body so what happens is the liver if you're feeling pms right irritable hot your skin's erupting you're getting night sweats hot flashes Those are symptoms that we want to help you to reduce. We want to eliminate, minimize those symptoms. So as we get the liver to function better, that will all level out. But what if you don't and you're just like, F it, I'm going to eat chips today and I'm going to eat that chocolate. So it makes it worse. You feel fine indulging for a few minutes and then you feel worse. The liver becomes excess. It invades the stomach. The stomach then becomes hot. And that heat is this kind of bubbling cauldron in the body that always wants more. It's like the the bonfire. You have to keep feeding the fire because it wants to stay active. So when the stomach becomes hot and the liver being in excess, that's not good. So you do want to cool the jets. You can do Chinese herbal medicine. You can do dietary adjustments. But when we take that heat out, you don't have those cravings like that. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the amount of wisdom you have around this is like, you know, it's like <laughs> we could go into any topic um, and the nuance of it for hours, which I I think is amazing and brilliant. Um, I feel like just for some of the people, oh, oops, I don't know what I'm doing. For some of the people who are out there, um, you know, watching this right now and, and, you know, just this question of like improving egg quality. We've talked about different things. We've talked about mindset. We've talked about daily behaviors. We've talked about environmental issues. We're, we've talked about diet. Um, I think probably I would imagine, as you know, that for some of the people out there watching, um, they're wanting, you know, that silver bullet or like, what is this thing going to be? And I guess I'm just wondering how to speak to that. Yes. You know what you could do is go to my website, Jennifer Waters. Well, now it's .net, jenniferwaters.net, which is being created in the world. Okay. But that is at jenniferwaters.world or .net. And on there, it's the nine strategies to detox. Sign up for that and you're going to get a PDF that I created that's really simple. And the best part of that PDF is... At the end, I did a lot of research on the toxins that are affecting fertility, in particular miscarriage. It's amazing what's out there. Um, I've spent a lot of time looking at that. And um, I want you to read through those. Take a look so that you are convinced that you need to have clean water. You want to eat clean food. Don't be eating a lot of seafood. There's resources in there that will help you determine um which foods you should be eating if you're eating a lot of tuna fish that is potentially loaded with mercury we want to be pulling these out of the body so there's some good information in that the nine strategies um with the resources there simple things you can do every day clean water clean air stop buying the bad stuff okay and so the first step to improving is to stop the assault of poison of toxins and that's negative thinking and that's what we're eating buying using applying 
then okay. we can start removing and then we can revitalize. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk <laughs> about just like, I mean, I know there's, I know there's no silver. I mean, for some people, maybe there is, but there's no like one answer or like one thing. It's this really, it is this holistic approach. Um, do you want to talk at all about, um, I don't know, like the, the light therapy or the, um, or just with acupuncture or anything else that, that fe feels like a kind of central part of your work? Sure, sure, sure. I can do that. Lisa um, Palmer, I'm just responding to yours. The nine it's strategies on, on my website, the jenniferwaters.net. Hopefully you can find it. Yes, on Jennifer's website. You know, that's a good question. So I just want to say for a minute, um, so as you know, I'm an acupuncturist. I'm also certified Arvigo, my abdominal therapist. And what I learned from Rosita Arvigo, it's a wonderful lineage. There are practitioners all over the world. You can go to arvigotherapy.net and find a practitioner near you. That one of the biz, biggest causes of congestion in the pelvis is a misaligned uterus. So the uterus, as you know, is a suspensory organ. It is she's designed to grow from the size of a pear to the size of a watermelon, which means she's suspended by ligaments. So what can happen? Let's say you're six years old, you're ice skating or you're playing basketball or something. You fall, bam, on your tailbone, your lower spine. Suddenly your uterus has shifted. OK, so she's out of alignment and you don't go home and tell your mother. And then she's like, oh, we have to put her back in position. That's what we're going to do, because we want to make sure your uterus is in good position, because if she's not, you can develop PCOS or ovarian cysts or fibroids or something later on. So location of the uterus really can matter. Now, the fertility doctors don't necessarily look at it this way. Why? Because they're generally thinking of embryo transfers. And then whether she's retroflexed or antiverted or anything, it's not a huge factor. But if we want to improve your egg quality and your uterus is leaning to one side or the other, or she's leaning back, which means the ovaries are now being pulled out of their position, this is going to create um, a blood stasis, a lymphatic stasis, congestion in the lower pelvis. Mm -hmm. right? And what happens over time is things get jammed up. And so we need to free that up. So learning some self-care massage, um, which we need to figure out how I can do that um, through Zoom yeah. Yeah, virtually, or find a practitioner near you mm -hmm. is huge. You're bringing back blood flow. So I was, it's, I was just going to anecdotally like because I'm always using myself as a. I, I was I was having some intermittent like pain, you know, on one side for a couple of months and just intuitively I was like, I need to like connect with this. So I would like go to bed and I put my hand right over it. And then I realized there was so much tension there. And I was like, do I have a cyst or something? And I was like, really just gently kind of like using the heat of my body and just my hand to kind of get the blood flow moving. So it's like, I think sometimes we get freaked out when it feels like there's something wrong with our bodies and we almost like alienate our bodies. We detach exactly. Yeah, instead of like going to that area and going like, okay, like how can I connect with you? Like I'm here, like yeah. let's work this out together. And I know it sounds very like, but it it it's incredible because it does, it shifts things. And, and just like when you describe the uterus, I mean, that's fascinating. I didn't know about that misalignment, but it made me just think about like what happens when you have, you know, you have a really tight muscle in your shoulder and then you, someone gets in there and they, they, help work it out and they get the congestion to move through. So it's like, it's so yeah. simple in a way. Yeah. It is. It's very simple. And I want people to start thinking this way. You are not your blood work. You are not your AMH and you're not your LH. Okay. So a blood test, like any test, whether it's saliva, whatever test you do, that is a moment of time. Okay. There's so many factors that are influencing tests. And I think we over, we equate our life and our health into whatever values come back on the reports. And I don't want you to, 
we started out saying that sleep hygiene is the most important thing. Um, eating well, learning to relax, learning to chew your food better. These are all the things that cause health. And so when it comes to improving your egg quality, all of this matters. I think we're used to going from zero to 10. We've got a chromosomal abnormality, a history of miscarriage. So we want to do really extreme things right away to make a change. And you can eventually, but we want to start with the simple things and work our way up to that so mm -hmm. that we're laying the foundation so that if you feel better, you are better. Okay, you are what you feel. And so we don't need reports to tell us that we're feeling good. Okay, we have to get back to trusting our innate wisdom of our body. If you feel good, you are good. That's mm -hmm. my personal, that's been my personal experience. Yeah, and sometimes we're, sometimes, you know, for some of us who've had so much trauma, through this process or even before this process, it can be really, really scary to trust that, you know, it can be really, really yeah. scary to trust that in some ways getting very simple <laughs> is actually yeah. like enough and maybe more than enough. And so just like being kind of compassionate and patient with ourselves. And I also always say that like curiosity is such an incredible gift and tool that we have when we really start to get, instead of moving, we, we move into fear, that's our fight or flight response. And instead of like noticing the tendency to get scared and to shut down, to fight, flight or freeze, and instead really going, how can I be curious? How can I slow down? How can I lean in? How can I stay with myself and with this process? Because it's that moment to moment to moment to moment awareness that's going to create the bigger change, you know, even right now, I'm like, Oh, I'm, I need to slow down. Like I need to take a breath. It's like, it's that simple sometimes. <laughs> and I guess your dog concurs. Um, Jennifer, I'm so incredibly grateful for you. And I think we should all just be so grateful for you. You are a, an incredible well of wisdom and love, and you have so much uh, to offer us. And I'm, I'm really excited that um, that you know we can continue to collaborate with the Fertile Spirit and everything that that you you know you bring. So um, thank, thank you, you Jamal. Well. Thank you yeah. so much for doing this important work. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. Um, okay. Well, I guess I feel like you and I will be back here on Facebook Live soon. And if you guys have other questions, you can go to Jennifer's website. Um, there, you can go to. Uh, thefertilespirit.com as well. You can send us messages wherever. Um, we'll have more to offer you as time evolves. Let's see. Okay, good. I'm so glad, Lisa. I hope you get something from it. Yay. Okay, no. baby. Oh. Okay, take care. Thank you, Danielle. Bye. Talk to you later. Okay.